I think Dubai, after COVID, has become truly a global city, where it's attracting people, a lot of wealthy people, stretching from China to Moscow to UK to Africa and all over the world. Dubai now need to focus more on, I would say, less density, because all those wealthy people want less density. I mean, they're doing a fantastic job by offering uh, golden visas and passports, changing the laws, more friendly labor laws and more, you know, friendly regulations. But I think on the density, in my view, even though I build probably the biggest number of towers in Dubai, I think we need to go to low rise now. So would you accept that you are, or you were, part of the problem that got us to this stage? And if you do accept that, will you be a leader to the solution in the future? I don't think I was part of a problem. I don't think to start with the problem. The city was very small. It needed to grow. It needed to scale. It needed to go. It's like you were five years old. You need to eat to become 18 years old and six feet tall. That's what's nothing wrong with it. But now you're 22 years old and you've grown up. You don't need to overeat to, to put more weight, you know? And now you need to be careful about your food. That's my example. So we did well. Now I am very much talking, even to the authority, let's do more low rises, more luxury. I'm wondering, is anybody listening to you? Is anybody agreeing with you that actually he has a point, less is more? Yes, I mean, look at Palm. We are here at my house in Palm. Palm has only one tower, okay? Now two towers, Atlantis, and in the one in the middle. So most of it is houses and six, seven story buildings. So you can't say Dubai is all, you know, high rises. When you look at the skyline, do you think, oh, I can put a tower over there? Oh, we can put something else over there. I can get something up there. I'm a developer. <laughs> what do you expect? <laughs> of course, I look where they put a building. It doesn't have to be a tower. Could be five story, could be six story, could be six story. You really do. You're always looking. Look at this. I think it's very impressive. It really is. We have two of them also. <laughs> you have two of them? Yeah. See that little shorter tower, which is wide with the helicopter pad? Yes. Next to the little twist one is ours. If we look back to the financial crisis of 2008, 9 and 10, you moved very fast to protect your company. Um, and I'm, I'm guessing you learned lots of lessons. From that time, what guidance, suggestions or advice would you give to anybody in the post-pandemic world? I tell you what saved me in 09. There were a dozen reasons, but the most important reason was admitting that I am in a mess. Very few people admit that they are in a problem. As a matter of fact, a lot of my company at the time, they thought it's a summer cloud, and they said it in the press. And they thought, I admitted this is a crisis, and I have to move fast, so admit there is a crisis, and take quick decisions, and be brave enough to make a surgery. My father told me, if your cancer is going to your left hand, don't let it go to your heart. Cut your left hand. It's difficult, but cut it. Thank God in, oh, uh, in, in, in 2020, as a company, we didn't have a crisis because we learned from 09, we're sitting on a good amount of cash, and business is all about cash. You have cash, you survive crisis. You don't have cash, you don't survive crisis, period. Our leverage was low, and our cash on the books were good. That's David Copperfield, isn't it? The, the whole thing about um, income and expenditure. Um, cash is king. You don't have to give all the cash. You need to invest the cash, but you need to have enough buffer, be ready for crisis. And I think in the internet age, we're going to see more cyclical and more crisis. The former president, Donald Trump, uh, there's, <laughs> you're smiling. You know him well. Obviously, you've, yes, you've done I business do. with him. Yeah. The prospect of him becoming president again what do you think? Do you think he will? Do you he's, think he'll run? He's trying. Do you think he'll run? From your he, knowledge yeah, of he the will man? Run. Yes, he will run. He will run. Would he win or not? That's the American election, polls will say. What did you learn from him doing business with him? Good or bad? I find him professional. Uh, knows his job very well. Goes to the detail. What I've learned also from him during his presidency when I had interaction with him a few times, lunch or dinner, and I was amazed, running literally 
the world. You as president runs the world. How relaxed he was in those lunches and dinners, or when he plays golf, and it's not like he running the most complicated, you know, institution or, or, or seat in the world. When you are developing a tower, how important is it for you that it be architecturally symbolic, even if that costs a bit more to make something that is really beautiful versus just square footage? I tell you, one of the key success for Damak in the early days, our unique towers, because our competitors, they were doing a lot of normal towers without a lot of, you know, excitement elements in them. And I insisted from day one that my towers to be a little bit different and I spend a little bit more money on them. And that positioned Damak as a luxury provider. Do you still do that? Take, yes. Do you still yes. take that position? Yes, yes. yes. I mean, see, the, the tower we have done in London is beautiful. Internal design by Versace and our side, I think, is an amazing tower. And we, we just done. launched All a right. tower what? there What's called like? Cavalli Tower. It is, each apartment has its own pool, you know, with, with, with the 2,000 square feet of terraces. It's, it's, this is one of my best towers I've launched in 20 years. How do you think you are viewed? How do people look at you, do you think? I think people look at me as a successful person. Of course, as a life is, some people are happy and they tell me, well done. And some people normally are a little bit jealous and they throw some stones on you. But that's life, you know, and you have to get used to it. When you're successful, you'll get both ends. Are you a mischief maker? Do people regard you as a troublemaker? Uh, so, sort of, oh, here he goes again. No. I don't think so. I think if there is anything people talk about me, they'll say he's a difficult man. Now, why I'm a difficult man? Because I do have to perform. So I have to perform. I have to drive my employees and my contractors and my, you know, different stakeholders to get the result done. You know, construction business is the most difficult. I have managed and run insurance companies, catering companies, manufacturing companies, but really investments. Construction is the most, most difficult thing to build, and especially to build in this massive, you know. Last year we delivered more than six and a half thousand units. It's no joke, you know. That takes a lot of ability to really drive people morning, evening.